organ uh, whenever she's here at church. So our first song would be 205, Gleams of the Golden Morning. Yeah, this hymn gives us, give us that hope, that blessed hope. Gleams of the Golden Morning, 205. Grab your hymnals, please, 205. I can remember um, Sister Irene playing the organ all the time, and this is one of our favorite hymns to play, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. Let us all sing this song, uh, 624, 624. Thank you. 
opportunity to visit Irene um, before uh, she was hospitalized. That was a while back. Yeah. And um, in the place where she was staying, she, she played this on the piano. Sorry. Um, it's hymn number 647, Mine Eyes, Eyes Have, have seen, seen the Glory. The glory. <laughs> Sing with me, sing with me. What are you, sing with me. What are you doing just standing there listening? Yeah. Sing with me. so much, uh, Sister Marife and Sister Julie. I'd like to welcome you all here, the family, the church family, and the friends, to celebrate the life of Sister Irene Godnick. I, and anybody comes into the church, Irene is first the organ, and then it's the testimony time. So she always stands up to praise God and, uh, you know, share her, share her, uh, the faith and the truthfulness that God has been with her as well. So today, I'm so happy to have everyone who is present here today to share and uh, celebrate. I think that would be the right term we were looking for, right? Celebrate Irene, 98. You know, God has been faithful to her. And I still remember one day me and my wife, Pavitra, went to meet her. It was all elders and we were there. And everybody was getting down from the... So Irene is, in the, is not in the first, the first floor, right? 
So every of the elders and pastor went to the elevator. <laughs> she held my hands and my wife and said, no, you're going to walk with me downstairs. <laughs> it, was not, it was not many years before, right? It was a few, few years before, and uh, we could see the energy and the blessing and the, and the happiness she had. And always she was ready to correct anybody. It doesn't matter whether she knows you or not. If you do something, she gets up and says, oh, you're doing wrong. <laughs> and uh, as we all laugh and smile, I see the wisdom in, in, in uh, Irene's life and how much she was willing and how much she was, she was caring. And that was the most, re most important reason that she spoke out what she did. So I'd like to thank you all for being here today. And now uh, I'm going to call our associate pastor, Pastor Chris Mindanao, to open us with a prayer, please. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you now just grateful um, and yet with heavy hearts because you have uh, given your daughter Irene 98 years of life. And we thank you, God, that uh, most, if not all of those years were used for your glory. And God, today we come together to celebrate her life we thank you, God, that uh, you have kept many safe as they have traveled here to, to come to the celebration this weekend. And Lord, we are just grateful that we can look around and all testify and agree that Irene has been a blessing to each and every single one of us. So God, as we continue uh, this memorial service in honor of her, we just pray, God, that your spirit would lead us and speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Chris. As we continue, we, are, we have a special message from our Pastor Martin Forbes, who's not here, who's back home, but he made sure that his video and his message was ready for uh, Sister Irene. All right, we're just going to fix this technical. We just don't know where the volume is going to. So we'll get it fixed before we play it again. And as you saw, Pastor Forbes intentionally said, I'm going to sit in the organ and uh, give the message. So it was, uh, it's amazing how impact Sister Irene has made in everybody's life. Pastor Forbes gets cookies from Irene every week. I don't know how many of you have got that. She gets the cookie packet for all the kids here and she brings it. And I had an opportunity to taste them as well, when I had my little ones. But once they grow up, we don't get the packets. It goes to another family. <laughs> so that's how she keeps moving. And it's been a wonderful thing how Sister Irene was able to keep track of who is coming, who is going out. Let's see if the volume works. Not yet. No, it's still not working. Haki, we'll just try it later. Yeah. 
Thank you. Um, so now uh, I'd like to call Sister Linda Costin to present a special music for us, please. His is the power and glory, right? You know, praise God and thank you so much for the reminder. And this is what Irene was always proclaiming as well. Thank you so much, Sister Linda, for, you know, reminding us. And uh, I'm sure Irene would have been so much happy to hear this message that has been spreading across as well. As we, as we sing, as we celebrate, we are going to have the time where people are going to come up, you know, family, friends, come up and share about uh, Sister Irene Godnick, and uh, we are going to enjoy. I'm sure there's going to be tears, but that's okay. That's the joy and that's the symbol that we share as our gratitude for her life as well. And I just have to uh, especially thank Andrew, you know, he's there, uh, the grandkid. I call him out because he's been, he was always there for Irene, you know, when we saw him around. And uh, he reminded me of my own relationship with my granddad. You know, I was the special one for him all the time. And, uh, you know, I'm so happy that uh, Irene and Andrew had that bonding, you know, in the time of need, and I really appreciate it. At the same time, I'd like to thank the, um, the eldest ministry of Lake Nelson, especially Sister Shioni, who was leading it in the times where we need, uh, Sister Arlene, and, uh, you know, they knew more <laughs> about Irene. And uh, Sister Shioni always comes and tells me, Elder Matan, Irene wants us, she wants us to take her here, but I know she couldn't walk. How could we tell her? So we, they made all the efforts, and I'm so thankful for being part of the church family who was always there for Sister Irene. And we were always there for her because she was always there for us. And you know, when I started 14 years here before, we had to give a special key to Irene. The church service starts at nine, but she's here at 8.45. And she says, well, you're making me stand in the cold. You need to let me in. And she has the cute shoes. I don't know whether you've seen that. It was always there. She has the cute shoes around. It's like a baby's one, right? So it was a beautiful one. She has it, and she comes and wears. And nobody touches it. And none of the <laughs> instrument settings needs to be changed. Otherwise, she complains about it as well. So it, it was all beautiful. So as we remember this and smile and celebrate, I'm going to call John Godnick to come up and share a few words for us, please. All right, you can go first. <laughs> All right. So now it's uh, Brother Mark Godnick who's coming. So 
Hello, church, family. We appreciate everyone coming out tonight to celebrate our dear mom's um, involvement uh, with everyone here. As you know, she uh, was born in um, uh, 1926. Uh, that's six years after my dad was born. My dad was born in uh, 1920. And the two of them uh, were quite the pair. I don't know that any of you were here when John Gedenek roamed the earth, but uh, Irene um, was, was the lightning, but John was the thunder. <laughs> so he, he, he could, he could lay, lay the law down. And the minister, always on the way out, would have a, a firm handshake from, from my father, John, with a, a, a correction or two on the sermon's <laughs> details. <laughs> so uh, something that we all have uh, fond memories of. But, you know, mom was born um, really right during the time of when there was the Depression. So, um, you know, she, the Depression kind of went the decade of the 30s. And uh, she was, you know, just very young. And there was four of four of uh, sisters. Uh, Ella was the oldest. I mean, Hedwig was the oldest. Ella was the youngest, and Catherine was in the middle with Irene. And um, so their mother was raising them. Her name was Hedwig too, and they lived in the Woodbridge area, going to, uh, and they were going to the Catholic church at that time. And their father had been had been. Uh, had died due to complications due to the World War I um, tuberculosis that he had um, acquired while he was in prison during the World War. And uh, so Hedwig, my great-grandmother, was raising the four daughters uh, in Woodbridge all by herself and was feeling overwhelmed. So, um, she uh, had a plan that she was going to end her own life and have the girls go to the uh, Catholic um, place, the, the orphanage, I guess, uh, of the area. And the day before she was going to do that, someone knocked on her door. I think Irene has told this story, but it, you know, it really hits home that it was a Seventh-day Adventist church member that came and gave them the steps of Christ. Basically, from there on out, they had talked to the Catholic minister to say, hey, is this okay? We're planning to maybe join this other church. They have a lot of support for us. And the uh, Catholic um, priest said to uh, Hedwig, uh, Irene's mom, yes, yes, please, they're good people, go. So that was the blessing from the Catholic uh, Church priest. You know, so mom started out uh, in life when uh, Calvin Coolidge was our president. And so we are 16 presidents later uh, with Joe Biden at this point. So she kind of has seen, seen it up, go up and down. And, you know, none of that really mattered to her that much. Um, but, you know, what she really loved was the people around her. You know, she, she did everything she could for everyone that ever was in her life and would write letters incessantly. And you'll hear a letter or two that she may have written to some of the grandchildren. Uh, but we're going through her belongings. And not only was she writing letters, but she was uh, receiving letters and she was keeping letters. So we have really decades worth of letters that she has received. But she was very faithful, and the letters that she would write were very specific to that person. It meant a lot. It meant a lot. The um, things that we have uh, as memories, as, as children, many different memories, they would, they would be great memories that they would always take us camping. We were involved with the Pathfinders right from the get-go. Our, our families, and we have some other families that are in the, in, in the uh, audience tonight that helped raise this church, uh, the church school first, and then uh, years later, th this church. And there's a bench out front um, that has John Gedenek and um, 
Peter Kowalski, whose son is here, um, Buddy, if you could see him sitting here nodding his head. And he and I went out there and took a picture on the bench uh, as the sons of the men that were on that bench. So, a lot of memories through uh, Lake Nelson. Um, the Kowalskis lived on both sides. Jack is here, one of my dear friends from childhood. They lived over in the house on this side of the church. And his cousins lived over on the uh, house on the other side of the church here. So a lot of people had moved here specifically because they wanted their children to go to this uh, specific school and be a part of the Seventh Adventist uh, family that was here. You know, over the years, we've, we've done many different things. And mom would always be a faithful traveler. We'd always come whatever, you know, event after dad died, whatever we were doing, she wanted to be a part of. And we would always fly her different places. And Andrew would come with her sometimes if she wasn't able to come, you know, on her own. The last time I remember that she came on her own was uh, when we went to Alaska as a family. We were going up to visit my daughter, uh, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah, that's going to be helpful. Uh, we went up to visit Lisa who was employed uh, at, the, at the National Park, uh, Denali National Park. And mom was all about, oh, let's go up to Alaska. That's the one state I haven't been to in the United States. She had been to every other state, but not to Alaska. She hadn't been to Hawaii either, but we won't, <laughs> didn't want to get with that. Uh, anyway, so when we fly, fly to Alaska, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to get mom a really nice flight, and she can arrive here at 12. Uh, and then, you know, we'll just, you know, go to the hotel and we'll meet up with our other friends that we're going to go around Alaska. Well, lo and behold, uh, dear son had her flight arriving at 12 midnight, not 12 noon. But not a word was said. She was happy as a lark. It's like, I'm in Alaska, you know. So it was, she was 82 years old. And um, we took a trip um, on this bus 90 miles out to where you could view um, the Mount Denali. And there was a lake uh, where you would um, uh, camp. And it was pouring down rain. And we were setting up the tent, pouring down rain with our friends that were with us. And, um, you know, she was not complaining a word. Uh, we, I had forgotten the food. Uh, Laura had to go back to get our food. Uh, long story short, you know, one of those nightmare camping trips, not a word uh, was ever said. And the next morning, she slept on, in a sleeping bag on a little mat in a tent with pouring down rain, loving every minute. So the next morning, we wake up, we're making breakfast, and lo and behold, the sun, the the clouds clear, and the one time in that month that you could see Mount Denali, she saw it. So, good times. But you know, many things that I could I could really talk about. My dad being the pathfinder, um, we have uh, an engraved brick uh, at Harper's Ferry, where we were able to donate to the. Um, Appalachian Trail Conservancy, and we could give in memory uh, and have a brick laid there. And the, and the daughters and I came up with this on his brick. Ever a pathfinder, John Gadenick, find your true north. So that's there. So the one I thought up for mom. Music flowed through her veins, Irene Gedenik. Make your life song matter. And that's my, that's my message to you. Thank you. The legacy Sister Irene has left behind. It started with a good Adventist. I'm sure Sister Irene was an example of a good Adventist till the end of her life as well. And uh, as we continue, I would like all of you to focus on the organ. You see a cap, a sash, and the you know, scarf. So this was Irene Gardenick's, you know, the master guide uh, attire that she used to wear. And when we received this today, 
Everybody looked at each one and I said, hey, I'm able to recognize this, I'm able to recognize this, right? It's something beautiful that she left as a legacy. And music in her veins was not a joke. Let's sing. Whenever we go, she says, let's sing. Whether it is off card, off card, she just keeps going on. Just have to sing, 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 and sing. And, you know, God has blessed uh, Sister Irene. And with the education, we are thankful, Mrs. Maragoto, the principal and the teachers from the school is also here. How much Irene wanted the school and how much she always fought for the school, even with the conference, about some dealings she has. And she never forgets that to ask the question. So we are so happy for the legacy that Sister Irene has left. Brother John, you're ready or you want to go with the grandkids now? Okay, I will, uh, all right, okay. I'll call the grandkids to come up to share some words. So this little guy, I think, truly added years to her life. <laughs> the smile from ear to ear. Mm -hmm. You want to say something? <laughs> that she had when she, he was around. Yeah, Pre precious. Grandma and the fruit that doesn't spoil. Okay, I need that. Grandma wasn't one for sugarcoating things. She was a force of nature, like you, with unfiltered opinions. But beneath that strong exterior was a heart flowing with love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even if it felt off-putting at times. <laughs> well, Grandma, she, she planted many seeds in my life. Um, some, like the love of the great outdoors, going Pathfinder adventures. Uh, she discovered that her... Uh, Backpacking on a lot of trips, camping, Everglades. Yeah, right? You're going to be going too. I have you right here. Spelunking expeditions, even. <laughs> that was the days of Grandpa when he squeezed into various places. Okay, big guy. Maybe Amy will take you. Auntie Amy. Other seeds were the deep appreciation of music, like you all know. But it didn't take root with me at first. I mean, I had too many ants in my pants to sit for those piano lessons. And then yeah, there was year after year of the opening and closing Sabbath with the piano. And uh, right in this very church was she on the organ and uh, starting to rub off on me. and. Uh, even until she became out of tune, <laughs> where we, our ears could, uh, couldn't bear much more. <laughs> um, but she planted that seed that allows me to appreciate hymns and Southern Gospels that much more today. You may remember that one song, He's Still Working On Me, <laughs> Making Me Who I Ought To Be. It was on uh, repeat. <laughs> the most important seed, though, that she planted was a seed of faith. Though I rebelled as a youngster, yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, her unwavering belief in God 
was ever present. Her rebukes, though they made me cringe at times, came from a place of love and desire for me to know the Creator and follow the path she believed would lead me to true happiness. It wasn't through that as much as my own fruitless searches that brought me back, though. Um, I ultimately appreciate the faith she instilled in me, and my faith has gotten stronger ever, ever since. Amen. Grandma's eyesight was going, as you mentioned earlier, and I remember following her home from uh, church one day and thinking, yeah, this is not good. Not going through, not stopping at stop signs and such. So I have a recording, yep. Uh, so her, her eyes were going, so we had to get the license. Uh, that was tough. Um, went on a flight without a license. If you ever fly without a license, you know what goes on at the TSA. <laughs> yeah, grandma. <laughs> I was going out for, for the wedding with Lisa, yeah. <laughs> And then her balance was going, and she was getting real unsteady. That broken ankle, smashed her face a couple times. It's like, okay, gravity, it'll get you eventually, right? And um, one th thing that never faltered was her faith. So Grandma's legacy is not just about the memories of her fiery spirit, her love of Gedenic traditions, the countless Sabbath school songs she taught me from He's Got the Whole World in His Hands, to Standing in the Need of Prayer, which, by the way, seems very especially fitting right now. But it was the way, really, that, like the fruits that don't spoil, she left that impression of faith on my heart. So... As I, find my sight, as I find myself reciting, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And the song, as we look out in the window and see the nature. Do I see Grandma's influence on my life coming full circle? I can only hope to be as effective in passing on the lessons she taught to me, both the ones I embraced and the ones that took a little later. It took a lifetime to really appreciate. So grandma may be gone, but the lessons she taught me and the love she shared will forever be with me. As I hear myself singing those Sabbath school songs to my son, Jesus loves me, this I know. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. I know her spirit lives on. Grandma, you were tough, opinionated, and loved me more than words can say. You planted a seed of faith in my heart that's grown deep and profound. I can only hope to be as effective with my son, baby John, as you were with me. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Bettinghouse, Mark's oldest daughter and Irene's granddaughter. And um, I have many fond memories of Grandma and Grandpa from when I was young. My sisters, loved, my sisters and I loved playing with blocks in her basement, eating cookies and pierogies and walnut and poppy seed rolls. And then she and Grandpa even taught us to wash the dishes afterwards. Uh, we went to the library and on hikes in the woods. We played games like Uno and Trees. And when we came to this church, we sat in the front row here and watched her play the organ. <clears throat> they took us to New Jersey camp meeting where we had so many adventures. And uh, we grew up in South Carolina, and so I always lived far away from Grandma, but she, would, um, she and Grandpa would bring us up here and we would spend weeks in the summertime. And then they would uh, also come down and take us to the Everglades. And um, as an adult, I took up a correspondence with Grandma and she always wrote letters. She was always remembering everyone's birthday and Christmas and would just send letters to say, how are you? Um, but these letters, 
um, became very meaningful to me as I kind of entered womanhood and motherhood. And she um, would always just write about her days and share news about our family and give advice and tell me about, you know, our family history. Um, and she would always send a church bulletin. So I have lots of church bulletins. <laughs> And she would tell, you know, what went on in the church service, and I would see her name, you know, as the organist. And um, so I kept, I kept many of her letters, and I was um, reading over them, some of them. So I brought uh, the two letters that she wrote to me after the birth of my two children. Um, so first, when my son was born, um, dear Amy, your dad called me when you were having your baby son. Now he's a grandfather, and I have a great-grandson, my third one. I know your sisters and your mom and dad are ecstatic about a boy. God bless you, and remember, he is always there for you. And then sometimes she goes on tangents, so here's one of them. (laughs) Andy called me early Sabbath morning. We had a great chat remembering wonderful memories. Once long ago, when your grandpa and I were in Plainfield, Andy came over and was driving his girlfriend's car that had a GPS. He got us to ride with him in our neighborhood and demonstrated how to use the GPS. To his surprise, grandfather was not impressed. (laughs) Andy, I don't need someone telling me how to go when I know how to go. (laughs) Yes, I miss grandpa. He's a voice in my head saying, Think before you speak, and know what to do before you do it. God bless you and Carrie as parents. The first five years of a child's life is important, and God will guide you through it all. Lots of love, Grandma. And this is the letter she wrote to my daughter, Rosie, who's here whenever she was first born. So it's, it's uh, addressed to Rosie. Dear baby girl, Rosalind, your grandpa Mark called me to let me know that you were born yesterday on the 20th of September. When you get older, you'll know what great parents you have, and your brother Rowan will be so happy to know you, and as you get older, he'll play with you. And that's true, they play together now. Your, Your mother will cook great meals, and your father, as a nurse, can take care of you when you are sick. I'm your great grandmother, Irene, and my mother, Hedwig, had four girls. They are gone now, and only I'm left. I'll pray for you every day, and remember, God will take care of you always. Love, great grandma Irene. Lots of love, kisses, and hugs for you. So, her correspondence, as I've said, was very meaningful, and it just is an example of how she always cared about people. And I think that's such an example that I want to take forward into my life, that people and relationships are the most important thing. And, um, you know, you can be very busy um, in your life, but always remember to think about the people around you and care for them, just like Grandma did. And um, I will always remember that. It's amazing to see. (laughs) When we create bulletins in the church, we give extra to Irene all the time. And she always asks, but I, we never asked her where it goes, but today I get the answer, right? And uh, it's amazing how it all ties back and how much truthful and faithful she was, right? And it's, it's, an, it's a beautiful thing. And she always reminded me of saying, please send a Sabbath lesson to Andrew as well. Because when we post it from the church, it, she made sure that she gets it and It's wonderful to see how she treated her own grandkids. She wrote the same letters to the church as well. I remember one day Sister Marcia giving me a paper and said, Elder Matan, figure this handwriting there, right? (laughs) Because Sister Irene started writing with pencils and she would always watch something on the TV and she had some comments to share or some to say, I love the music that they had today. So it's, it's, it's a heart of gold that you see that it cared for the family and it doesn't, you know, the girl which was born, got a letter from the great grandma already and uh, you know how the how much positive energy she could share and i think that's the um, that's the blessing and the greatness that we celebrate with sister irene today any other grandkids would like to come yes please hi 
Hi. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. My name is Laura. I'm um, the youngest of Mark's daughters. Um, and um, I have really fond memories of my grandmother. Um, she also wrote many letters to me. And um, I remember when I was a little girl, I would go visit her and my grandpa for sometimes weeks at a time. And we would go on trips to the library. And I would watch Chronicles of Narnia, and we would get videos from the library um, as well. And um, something that we loved doing together is collecting pennies. So anytime we would go on walks together, we would be on the search for pennies on the ground. Um, and that's something, like, whenever I see a penny on the ground, I feel like I am with my grandma. And um, throughout the years when she would send me letters, she would send me letters with pennies that she found taped to, um, so it'd be like one of those folding um, like postcards, and on one side would be the what she wrote to me, and then on the other side would be lines of pennies <laughs> taped to the letter. And so I, actually as a little girl, I used to collect um, uh, coins um, because because of her. And um, yeah, I just have so many um, really wonderful memories with her. I would say she was my closest grandparent. I, I've always felt the closest with her. And I, I remember when I was a little girl, we would I would get in bed at night with her and snuggle up. And she would tell me stories about um, how she met my grandfather and stories of um, my dad when he was little and I would share with her all the the boys I had crushes on and you know she would really just we, she was a friend she was just she was not only a grandmother but she was a friend and um, also something I'm really grateful for uh, is her love of music and how that has passed down through my dad and then also to me. And something that she always reflected back to me um, was how much I loved music and how much I loved singing. When, when I was a little girl, I would uh, sing a lot. And uh, to this day, I love singing. I, I um, sing often in groups where I live in Salt Lake City and I also play the violin. Um, and she really encouraged that legacy of love of music and it, not only music, but just expression, just like expressing what's inside of you. And as I'm sure most of all of you probably know how expressive she was. She was, she spoke her truth. She spoke what she thought she expressed. And I think that's one of the things that, um, I admire the most about her is, how courageous she was in expressing herself and just speaking what was on her mind. <laughs> I mean, that is, <laughs> I think that's such a rarity in, um, in our world. And um, so it's something that I um, have learned from her and I'm really grateful for. Um, and, yeah, I'm just really grateful that she was my grandmother. And um, Oh, and I also did, when I was a little girl, I, I, I played my violin up here several times, and I think a couple times with her accompanying me too. And so, yeah, she just really encouraged this um, musicality and not to be afraid to express yourself. So I'm just really appreciative of that. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm the middle child of Mark um, and grand, Irene's granddaughter. Um, I just wanted to share how much she meant to me. Um, and she had a beautiful life, and I was also one of her pen pals, and so we would write quite often because we never lived near her, and she also was my closest grandparent. Um, and she would always write about what was going on in the church, so probably some of your names I would recognize. <laughs> and she would send me a bulletin and just tell me everything going on in her life. Um, she was, as everyone has said, unabashedly herself, 
which I also found challenging at times when she would insult me. <laughs> but um, then she would apologize, which was really nice. Um, and the older she got, the more unfiltered she got, um, as I'm sure you might have all experienced. <laughs> so she wasn't always like that when I was younger. It kind of like grew. Um, and I guess, you know, she just, like Laura said, she just said what she thought, and hopefully that didn't upset you. <laughs> um, <laughs> she was very loving and wonderful to my sisters and I, and I have so many fond memories coming up here at Christmas in the summers. We would go to the beach, to the library, to the parks. We always did things outside, and she just had a love of life, and I feel very lucky to be part of her lineage. And I, I've been told I'm very similar to her by my dad before, so maybe I'll be like her when I'm 98. <laughs> Hopefully a little less offensive. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to say um, thank you for supporting her in these last years as a church family. I think that's really important. She had a strong community, and I'm definitely sure that that's why she lived so long. So, thank you. I'm John Godanik, the son of Irene. I have three, na three things to see here. Three, okay, I, it's three things. Chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Does anybody remember those? <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> That is our sweet Irene. She was definitely a chocolate chip cookie. And uh, it reminds us saying that, as uh, my sister was talking here, you said that she was unfiltered. But at all the time, she acknowledged and she said, he is still working on me. So she always had a balance out saying that, hey, I'm not being who I am, but I'm still being worked upon. So we just have to say that we learned that humility from sister uh, Irene. and. Uh, the chocolate chip cookie, right? <laughs> now I think the message from Pastor Forbes is ready. We will hear that before we go to Brother Frank. Yeah, next, next. We'll just see the message from Pastor Forbes. forget the first day that I walk into this church. Here at this very same place, I saw Sister Irene playing these music, these hymns. And for many years, it has been a blessing not only for me, but for many people who, has been, who have been impacted by her life. Today, I want to send my words of sympathy to the family. And I want you to know that Sister Irene has been such a blessing for us. We have been blessed by her talents. We have been blessed by her personality. The way how she has been has been so amazing. It has been such a blessing for us. Nonetheless, there's something I want to also highlight. is the fact that she's not only leaving precious memories behind. She's also leaving a wonderful legacy. For many decades, she has been serving in this church. Many lives have been impacted through her ministry here in this church and she will be missed. But we have the great assurance that one day we will see Jesus coming again. And I want to invite you as family members, friends, and members of this church, to let's look forward for that day. There is something else that I want you to notice, is that, you know, you see this? Mmm, these are cookies. Well, I can say personally that 
I almost ever saw about when she knew that I was going to preach here. Um, the before pandemic, she used to be bringing every single Sabbath, she used to bake cookies and bring for the children. Until one day I said to her, Sister Irene, I'm a child of God as well, so you need to bring cookies for me as well. So since then, she used to be bringing them. When she didn't bring for me, I would ask her, where's my cookies? And she would, I'm not going to make cookies for you today. I did not make cookies for you today with the particular way of how she would do things. I just want to thank the Lord because with these cookies, the cookies that she made, she did not just sweeten my life and the lives of the children around, but she made us feel welcome to this place. God bless you. We look forward to keep on, you know, holding on that hope and that faith. And one day when Jesus come, meet with Sister Irene at Jesus' feet and celebrate eternity. God bless you. May the Lord give you strength and hold on to this hope. It never stops with one song. Do you know this one? <laughs> you saw the fingers going on. That's, the, that's our sister Eileen. And uh, I'd like to thank Frank for just a slight change. So I'll call up uh, my brother Frank Costin. When this program was put in, he just said, I definitely need two minutes. And uh, here is your time, Brother Frank. Good evening. Um, I started coming to this church in 1985. I was baptized in 1983. I mean, 1993. So I knew Eileen for many years. Irene for many years. And um, for a little older woman, she could really play that organ very loud, and I really liked it. It's a shame we won't hear her chords echoing throughout this church anymore, but at least we had them for many years. Now, Mathon mentioned that Irene used to get on the microphone just before Garden of Prayer. She was, that was her main thing. She was really good. And for years, she'd started off lead lady. But you know what? Many times she would say, let us play, pray. We have to pray for our children. She would always mention the children. She was always concerned about the children. So she knew something, you know, that the kids need, and it was things would be happening in the future that maybe weren't so good and tempting to the children. So that, oh, I will, I will now instate this. Irene's battle cry, pray for the children. And we gotta keep that going, okay? And uh, many of you people uh, mentioned Irene and music a lot, and the one granddaughter mentioned Irene being Frank and hoped that she didn't hurt anybody's friend, uh, feelings, because I used to eat potluck with Irene all the time. And you know what she said to me? She told me she loved the drums. <laughs> it's not so funny. She told me she loved the drums. She told me she was happy I was playing with the orchestra. 
And I don't know if it really happened or if I was dreaming. She told me, Frank, you're not playing loud enough. <laughs> but anyways, um, so that's that. Uh, oh, yeah, because of the drums and playing in an orchestra, I made the cookie list. We had our share of cookies. So uh, I, I took the cookies off the ShopRite list. Now, I'm finished, you know, I'm finished, but I didn't want to say this, but maybe the, it's the spirit working. Well, last night I watched a, a video on YouTube by Ben Carson. Ben Carson is a Seventh-day Adventist. He was uh, the head of HUD, Housing Urban Development, under Trump. And l last night, I was w watching YouTube, and he was um, preaching at the Thompsonville th Church through the 3ABN circuit, three, uh, three Angels Broadcasting. And the, and the sermon was really good, and he was really comp uh, comparing today and how bad and how the devil's trying to get us and how, how to try to do away with the norms. But the um, sermon's entitled, Christian Families Confronting Social Norms. So she said, pray for the children. Or, and on the back route, you know, on the backdrop of, of the uh, pulpit was majoring in the minors. So one of them two, you, you know, you put uh, Ben Carson in the uh, YouTube and, and, and that Christian families confronting social norms. And you'll see that she was right about praying for the children. And God bless us with her being part of our family. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Frank. Um, it's been a blessing as well. And you hear the legacy from different ages of people. You know, that's the important. As we saw, we saw there, she saw 16 presidents and different ages. She mingled with everybody. She was there for everybody. And she was, she was talking to them to the same level of what she will do for, you know, at her own age as well. So uh, that's the Sister Irene we are celebrating today. I'm going to call Pastor Ray Eamon. And he has a legacy and a history with Irene. So. Family, so good to see you all. It's been a while, it's been some time. I, I really appreciate what we've heard over and over again about legacy because I, as I think about Irene, it's, uh, it's a passing of a legend. We all have had our encounters with Irene. Mine began more than 30 years ago. I first came to church here. I wasn't an Adventist, my wife was, but uh, I wasn't. But that didn't make any difference to John and Irene. They immediately took us under their wing. Um, they, they wanted us to be engaged and involved with the church. And when they knew that we had a young daughter, oh my goodness, uh, Pathfinders, all of this activity, I can remember many, many Sabbath afternoons, and sometimes that we did things together on Sunday, where we would go for Sabbath hikes, the walks, they took us to places, I, I, I can't even number them, uh, amazing walks, and John would always have a story to tell us about what we were looking at and about the fauna, he could tell us everything. It was incredible. Went, first time I ever went canoeing, I went with them to the Pine Barrens. I got baptized, not intentionally, but I did get baptized. <laughs> uh, um, and Irene really took a, uh, John too, but Irene really took a liking to my daughter and was amazed that uh, they would sing in the car. And my daughter would sing along and she'd know songs. I'm like, I don't even know that song. And this little one knows it. Irene loved, loved that. So much so that when my daughter graduated, she made the trip down 
with the Bramhalls down to Shenandoah to be and attend the graduation, to be there. So little moments like that, so touching. I can think of, like I said, all of these, uh, when we weren't, when the weather got cold and we couldn't go out and do things, we would wait for Sabbath evening, we'd go to the Denick's house. What's that, 4th Street? 8th Street? 7th. I'm bad with numbers, especially, especially in Plainfield. Um, and we would go over the house and we'd close the Sabbath together. Like Andy had said, we'd play the, uh, play the piano. Um, and uh, we and we would we would read something from scripture, but then we would transition and then we would get into playing Uno. <laughs> Irene is was a an opponent. She took no prisoners. <laughs> she wanted to win. <laughs> And so she always had that feistness about her. Oh, I didn't forget to mention, on, on Sundays, we would go out. I'm glad to see we would, uh, buddies here, the Kowalskis. Uh, we went many times with the Kowalski family, and we went with the Kijaks. The Gdanics, we would go uh, tubing down the Delaware. First time I ever did that was with the, with the family. Good to see you, buddy. Um, I, I know I got a short time, so I'll try to conci- be concise. We talk, we've heard a lot about Irene being, being a bit feisty, and I have to agree. I noticed that it, after your dad passed, it seemed to get a little, a little more intense. I think, I think John, was, John was kind of the filter a little bit, but when, when John wasn't there, it came off. And um, I, I would say I was on the receiving end of that quite often. Um, I can remember serving with Irene in the, uh, on the board. Um, I don't think I ever served with the school board, but I know I did so with the church board. And I used to watch her, and some of you might remember, remember John Christopher's? Yeah. <laughs> what a relationship. Um, so <laughs> we would sit in board meetings and listen to them go back and forth, back and forth, heated. And I, you're, you're almost thinking, like, this is going to come to blows. And John used to be so, he would, sometimes he would just antagonize her. He knew how to push the button to get her going. And I would just sit there, and I was amazed. When it was all over, they would get together, like nothing ever happened, get in the car, and go back home together. She would drive her home. Like, nothing happens. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. It, which speaks to the level of friendship. And that's one thing I, I, I have to say uh, in regards to Irene. We, we, we've, we've talked a little bit about her. Um, and I've had several people ask me, why do you let her do that to you? <laughs> Whenever I was an elder, we, I, you know, the mic, she would come up and I'd say, we're well, going to have the, the garden of prayer. And she would, I couldn't even get the word prayer out of my mouth. And she was up and coming to the mic. And there were times she would just take it right out of my hand. <laughs> and people were saying, how could you, how, you, know, you know, that was, you know, that's like disrespecting you in front of everybody. But you know what? I learned because I've, I've, I observed her relationship with John. And I think in some ways I became the surrogate for John. <laughs> and it was a relationship where I, I didn't feel like she was disrespecting me. I knew that we had such a gl- good friendship, a close friendship, that, um, that she knew that I wouldn't hold that against her. And uh, there were times she would say, you know, I'm, you know I, like, I, maybe a little, a little too harsh. I said, that's Irene, I love you. And you know, I, when I think about that, those times, um, I have many, many good memories and I can't recount them all. But um, the last one I had with Irene was, and Andy had let us know that she was, she was in a nursing home and um, We had just come back, we were in New York, 
and I was doing a Bible study with some folks in New York, and I was coming back late on a Saturday, Sunday, Sunday night, and I was tired. And my wife, Mickey, said to me, let's go see, let's go see Irene. And I was like, all right, we went, and we got to see her, and I'm so thankful that the prodding of the Holy Spirit, we got to see her that one last time. And the memory I have was when we were there with her, we said, do you want to sing a song? Her face lit right up, yes. And then we prayed with her, not knowing that that would be the last time that we would see her. And that's the memory that I'm going to keep in my heart with Irene. That memory there was so precious to see her. Uh, and her love for God, uh, even there in the, uh, the uh, twilight or the dimming of her life, she still had that love for God and wanted to offer praise to him. That's all I wanted to share. Thank you, Pastor Ray. Sister Irene was ready. You know, there are a few members who visited her last, just came and told me that, A, she said she wants to sleep. And uh, she was in peace, and uh, she was ready for the sleep that God, when next time she wakes up, we know it will be on the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we have that hope. And we are so happy and proud to celebrate with all the words that we could share, with the tears, even the sweetest, you know, chocolate chip cookie, right? We are going to spend more time on music, and celebrate her as well. So we have a few special music prepared for us. I'd like to call Sister Sabrina to present the special music. Good evening. Um, one of the things uh, Irene used to say every time she would come to uh, visit Lake Nelson, she would say, how come you didn't sing today? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I can't sing every Sabbath. <laughs> but she did have that love for music, and she um, liked when I sang and shared Sandy Patty songs. I'm going to share We Shall Behold Him, which reminds us of thank God that we, we will be able to meet with Irene again and see Jesus.
Lord, thank you so much, Sister Sabrina. I'd like to call Sister Sandy Chowdhury to give a special music. Hello, everyone. I'm going to be singing a hymn, and this is called Give Me Jesus, and I'll be doing it a cappella. the 
to die. Oh, when I come to die. Oh, when I come to die, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You. Thank you, Sister Sandy. And now, as we all heard from the church family, um, Mrs. Maragoto is up here to share some words representing the school as well. From the Lake Nelson Adventist Academy, our principal, Mrs. Maragoto, will share a few words. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Lake Nelson Adventist Academy, I would like to extend our deepest condolences. In 1994, when I first set foot here at Lake Nelson as a teacher, Irene was one of the first ones that met me. Interestingly enough, I was interviewed in um, the room that used to be the, the library at first. And uh, then it became later on in many years, um, the computer lab. And as God has willed, you know, now is my office. But I remember that um, as I became the teacher of second, third, and fourth grade, multi-grade classroom, Lake Nelson at the time had only 33 students when I first set foot here. Um, Mrs. Kodanik and Mr. Kodanik were one of the faithful ones that um, every week before school started, they would join forces to have a work bee. And um, I remember clearly as in one of the largest rooms on that side of the building where she would faithfully come with all of her gardening tools to weed every single plant that was in front. And not only that, to make sure that the windows were sparkling clean. She always would tell me, it is important for the children to look outside the window. <laughs> and. Um, as the years went by, and um, in 2007, a God will that I became principal of Lake Nelson School. I remember that um, we were having a constituency meeting here in this very room, the sanctuary. It was a Sabbath evening, and Irene would always sit at the front. That was her spot. And uh, I had just, you know, made my presentation a vision to share. And in one of those comments, you know, I had shared, you know, with the members, the parents present, you know, how much it is a sacrifice for our parents to have our students, you know, in our Adventist schools. And uh, after I'm done with my presentation, she gets up and says, I want to make a correction to what uh, Mrs. Maragoto said. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord Jesus, what did I say? <laughs> and she tells me, I want to make sure that everyone knows here that it is not a sacrifice for them to have their children at the school. It is a duty. After that presentation, <laughs> Um, she comes to me and she holds my hand and she tells me, you know, it takes a woman to get things done. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I process that. <laughs> and um, later on in the year, she was faithfully, when she was still able, she would come by the school carrying the magazines, the creation magazines, with all the nature pictures. And she would hand them to me, and she says, you know, I don't know if you use them anymore or not, because that's something that she would do when I was a teacher. She would bring me uh, the creation magazines. She knew that I loved art as well. So she would tell me, use them with your art. But uh, later on, she would just bring them to me, and she says, I don't have any more use for them, but maybe you can find some use here at this school. 2013 when God continued to bless this fertile territory where she has planted very deep seeds. Lake Nelson School became a Lake Nelson Adventist Academy. And um, for the first time ever, Lake Nelson was able to offer up to grade 12. And she was one of the ones that when we broke ground, for the expansion, the physical expansion of the building, that she was holding one of those golden shovels to help break ground. And I wish I would have known earlier of this service. I just found out this afternoon, because I would have made sure that that picture would have been presented. It was important for me that you heard as family members from this school, because there is no present without a past. And the present that we're living today and the lives that are being blessed, because currently we have 320 students at Lake Nelson Adventist Academy. It is through this selflessness, through this unselfish, not measuring how much to give of individuals like Irene, who always reminded me this land was bought for this school. You protect it. And that was always something very firm that she held in her heart, this school. That was always a priority. And so therefore, do know us, her children, her grandchildren, that in heaven she's going to have many, many, many stars that are going to be represented through the sacrifice, the love, and the passion that she had for Adventist education. And in due time, sooner than what we ever think, we shall see her again. Thank you, Mrs. Maragoto. And now we have a special from Lake Nelson Singing Group.
uh, we'll be singing a song, Midnight Cry. And in behalf of the group, we'd like to uh, send our deep sympathy and condolence. Might be in this time of uh, uh, pain and hardship, um, let's remember that God is, is always there. And I think for Irene, this is a glorious day for her. Because you know, when we die, we're just like sleeping, right? So when she opens her eyes, it will be a glorious day of the Lord.
inviting everybody to stand up. We're going to sing our closing song, which is Because He Lives. Thank you so much, Lake Nelson Singing Group. We celebrated today, speaking about Sister Irene. We heard the celebration through songs. Now we are going to watch and celebrate few pictures that we have put together for Sister Irene. Haki, can we have the pictures on? we saw the celebration and the purpose in her life, the community in her life, and you see the meaning that was able, she was able to establish through the strength of the guard, and she's still waiting for his coming. But I'd like to announce that tomorrow, Sunday, May the 19th, we have a viewing and a visitation from 2 to 6 p.m. at Higgins Home uh, for funeral at 752 Mountain Boulevard, Watchung 07069. If you need any addresses, please reach out to me or anybody here. So tomorrow we have that uh, viewing and visitation. And now it's time for the closing song. Let us all stand to sing him Because He Lives.
prayer. Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the opportunity that you have given us to celebrate in and share in the life of your beloved daughter, our friend, Irene Gadenik. Lord God, thank you for the time that we were able to spend with her. 
Lord, we heard all the testimonies. We saw the wonderful stories from her family, from her friends, her church family, of her love and devotion that she had, and without doubt, the faith and the life that she lived with you, Lord God, in your service. And so we have no doubt that just as you said when Jesus was baptized, this is my son in whom I am well pleased, there is no doubt in our minds that on that day, when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in the small things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come, let's celebrate together. Thank you, Father, for that opportunity once again. And my prayer is for her friends and especially for her families, her family members, her children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, that they too may live a life of dedication to you and of service to man so that they too, Father in heaven, can see and be with her and joy eternally with you, and we can celebrate together. Thank you, Father. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and we ask amen and amen. You may be seated. I want to uh, ask everyone to please join us uh, for a repast. Um, actually, let us uh, pray for the uh, for the meal. Father in heaven, once again, we are so grateful for your love and for your kindness, for your goodness. We ask that you bless the meal that we are going to share in. And Lord God, we ask that you bless the hands that made it. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your kindness and your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.